Can you hear me okay at the back? Yeah. Yeah. Great. I can point my microphone up a little bit. Did someone say we can't see you? <laughs> <laughs> glasses are steamed up. Because your glasses have steamed up, not because I'm invisible. <laughs> You might be looking at me actually while we're on the subject of glasses. You might be looking at me going, Anna looks a bit different. Yeah. What looks funny about Anna? It's because I haven't got any specs on. Because I got so fed up with my eye, with my glasses steaming up every time I wore a mask that I went and had them lasered. Wow. <laughs> it was a bit of a spur of the moment thing. <laughs> anyway, it's all worked out fine. <laughs> but in the middle of the pandemic, um, I don't know what I was thinking, to be honest, but I don't need to wear glasses anymore, and that's a great gift, so <coughs> God bless spontaneity. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to do communion in our service today. Uh, I will talk through the directions immediately beforehand, um, because if I was you, I might forget what I've been told um, I might get caught up in the music and uh, um, silent sermon, and I might <laughs> I might forget the instructions I've been given. So um, we'll we'll talk through it immediately beforehand. I'm also aware that for some of you, you might not have received communion for more than a year now, and that's going to feel like um, a poignant kind of moment. And I think uh, it's. It does us good to, uh, to remark at the beginning of our time together that this day feels unusual. Um, it's Easter Sunday and there, there would have been lots of traditions. So this is my second Easter here, but this is the first time I've taken a service in a church building on Easter Sunday. So, well, I did St Helens this morning. So for all of us, it feels... Um, I think there's a sense of grief uh, and a sense of hope and a sense of fear. Um, we could probably continue to use all the words, couldn't we, to try and describe how we feel at the moment. Um, but it does no harm to, to just say at the beginning of the service, we all recognise that this is unusual and that taking communion is going to feel a little unusual. And it's okay, it's okay to, to feel like that. There's two of us sitting at the front here in robes who feel a bit like that as well. Discombobulated. That's a good word. Let's pray, shall we? Christ, yesterday and today. The beginning, the beginning and, and the end. end. Alpha and Omega. All, all time belongs, belongs to him and all ages. To, to him, him be glory and power. power. For every age and forever. Amen. This is the day when our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life. Throughout the world, Christians celebrate the awesome power of God. As we hear his word and proclaim all that God has done, we can be confident that we shall share his victory over death and live with him forever. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. 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 And we're going to listen to Adam play, Thine be the glory.
Our first reading this morning is from the book of Acts, reading from chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were repressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He, he has, has given us new life, life and hope. He, he has, has raised Jesus from the dead. dead. God, God has claimed made. us as his own. He has brought us out of darkness. He has made us alive to the Lord. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell, filled your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned and the new way to life stands open, in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. 
Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him. I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Alleluia! 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 Christ is risen! He is risen, risen indeed. indeed! Alleluia! Today is the most significant day of the church calendar. The most important day, the most important celebration. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. And it's especially special, if I can say that, because we're here inside our church buildings for the first time this year. We've been able to open up our church buildings and come in and worship God here. And that's special, isn't it? Because when you're in this place, it feels different, it feels special. It feels kind of like a, there's a thinness between heaven and earth when you come into church. And it feels good. It's like when you walk into a cathedral. Who's been to Southerminster? Everybody? Other cathedrals, like Lincoln Cathedral, or York Minster, or cathedrals in Europe. They are amazing buildings. You go inside them and there's something about the vastness, the space, that just fills you with awe. I find it's a bit like, you know, those really dark nights when you're camping somewhere away from all the light pollution and you can see the canopy of stars, you can see the Milky Way. And it's just like awe-inspiring. It really brings to mind those words, the fear of the Lord. Because it's not scary, but it's awe-inspiring. And that's what we get when we walk into cathedrals, when we walk into churches. You get that feeling in your stomach, don't you? Or maybe in your heart, maybe it flutters a bit. But you definitely sense something, don't you? You feel it. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Alleluia! Do you feel it? Do you feel it? Because if truth be known, I feel it more when I walk into a cathedral than when I say those words. But I should feel it more when I say those words. Because those words mean so much more than any cathedral can ever say. Because Christ is risen. And that changes everything. Death is defeated. Death takes on a completely different meaning. There is life after death. Jesus proves it. And it proves that everything Jesus said was true. Everything
everything he said about himself. Now I suspect most people, when they walk into a cathedral, will feel something, will feel that awe, will get a sense of something. They might not realise it's God, but they'll get a sense of something. And yet, where's most of Loudon today? Where's most of Caythorpe and Gunthorpe? They're not clamouring to burst down the doors of this church. They're not in here on the day we celebrate Christ is risen. It doesn't, for some reason, it's not carrying the same amount of awe as, a, as an architectural building, something that was constructed by human beings. And yet we've got this amazing truth, Christ is risen. <coughs> now I think it's probably... Because if we're really honest, it's simply hard to believe. It's just hard to believe that Jesus rose from the dead. It's not an easy concept to get our heads around. I mean, you've only got to read the Gospels and realise the disciples struggled with it as well. They didn't get it. You think about it, they'd spent three years with this guy. And they'd walked everywhere with him, been everywhere with him, watched him do everything. He preached with great authority, and they thought, this guy is something else. He'd healed people who were ill. he cast out demons from people. he fed thousands with a few loaves. Everywhere he went, he did amazing things. He challenged the religious leaders of the day. They really thought this was their Messiah. This was the one who was going to bring the new age, who was going to restore Israel to greatness. This was the promised Messiah. And then, boom! They march into Jerusalem triumphant, and a couple of days later, he's arrested. He's hauled in front of the Sanhedrin. He's accused of things he hasn't done, and he stays silent. He's taken to the Roman authorities, the only one who can implement, in, in, put the execution into place that the Jewish people want. And he's beaten by the Roman soldiers. And sometimes I think we struggle to, to realise just what that was like. He was beaten so severely that he probably wouldn't have needed the crucifix to die. He probably would have just died from the wounds that had been inflicted on him in that beating. And yet they march him out of Jerusalem carrying his own cross. And they nail him to it. And all the time... He is loving these people. He's not cursing them. He's not trying to destroy them. He's just loving them. And saying, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. But he dies. And the disciples are left, scared stiff. They thought he was the Messiah, but he's dead. He's in a cold tomb. And what do they do? They shut themselves in a room and lock the door. And then the ultimate happens. Mary turns up and says, guys, it's getting even worse. The man we loved, who they killed, they've now stolen his dead body. How humiliating. Imagine if one of your relatives died and the night before the funeral, somebody stole their body. I mean, imagine how you'd feel. They were desperate. And they ran to the tomb and they looked inside and it was empty. He was gone. There's a, there's a little inkling that the, the penny is starting to drop. The disciple whom Jesus loved went in and believed. We're not quite sure what that means, but he believed. For me, it's, the process is beginning. They're starting to get it. But you have to realise, after that, they went back to the room and locked themselves in the room. They were scared stiff. They didn't think something amazing was happening. They thought Jesus' body had been stolen. And Mary turns up and says, I have seen the Lord. And if you read Luke's account of this story, even then the disciples didn't believe her. So it's not really surprising, is it? We find it hard to believe. We find it hard to grasp. We find it hard to think that when we say, Alleluia, Christ is risen, we say, Alleluia, God has changed everything. God has changed everything. But think about it. Eleven 
scared men and a handful of women. And you've got to hand it to the women. I mean, they are, always are the more intuitive ones, aren't they? The more empathetic ones, the ones that kind of get it sooner. And Mary got it. And even when she wasn't believed, she still pestered the, the lads until they sort of worked it out and thought, OK. So apologies to all women that then it seems like the men seem to take over because it was the women that worked it out first. But 11 men. And 20 centuries later, we have a worldwide faith following with churches in every country in the world, with magnificent cathedrals. Something happened. Something really did change. We went from scared men to a global faith and amazing things happening. And you look in the book backs and you see that reading we had. Peter at the house of Cornelius, the once scared disciple, is now doing exactly what the risen Christ told him to do and preaching it. And he's preaching it with all power, with no fear, with total confidence. And let's get this straight. He's doing it in a climate where he knows that will probably lead to his death. Because the Roman authorities are still wary of revolutionaries and the Jewish religious leaders still don't want a Messiah that they can't get behind. So Peter's risking everything. But he's just out there preaching it to Cornelius. And that's because of a, of a special thing that happened when Jesus rose from the dead. It wasn't just that he rose from the dead and said, hi guys, I'm back. And they said, all right, that does it. Let's go out there. He gave them the Holy Spirit. He poured out his Holy Spirit on them. That's what's empowering. That's what gave them the ability to do what they were doing. That's what changed everything. That's what got us from 11 scared men to a Christian faith that we can all be part of. It changed everything. And it's at this point we have to say to ourselves, okay, so how has it changed everything? How are we doing with that change? Because, hallelujah, Christ is risen. How has that affected our lives? It tells us that Jesus is the Son of God. It proves that. It proves that everything he said was true. And what was Jesus about? Jesus was about welcoming everybody into the love of God. Peter got it when he went to Cornelius' house. He said, this is for everybody. It doesn't matter what colour. It doesn't matter what sexual persuasion. It doesn't matter what football team you support. This is for everybody. And he also, Jesus also said, and what I'm here to do is restore people, make them whole. And he healed people. And he cast out demons. For us, that might, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of thinking that says, you know, it's not that we had, we're not full of demons anymore. It's maybe that they weren't necessarily full of demons and maybe it was a lot of mental health going on, a lot of depression going on. We don't know. But Jesus was making people whole. People who weren't whole were being made whole. And he was feeding people. He was doing so much. And so let's look at this changed world and our part in it. Let's look at what's going on. Let's look at the last year. How are we doing when it comes to racism? How are we doing when it comes to sexism? How are we doing when it comes to inequality and discrimination? How are we doing when it comes to feeding the hungry? If it wasn't for Marcus Rashford, we would have had so many school kids hungry in the summer holidays. Jesus cured the blind. He helped people see. How are we doing with helping people see? It pains me. I'm the curate here. And we're not rammed full of people from Loudoun. And I think it's because at the end of the day, none of us really get that he is risen. And he comes with power. Power for all of us. The Holy Spirit for all of us. And I think this Easter as we come out of the pandemic, as we literally come out of death to life, Let's rethink this. Let's revisit this. Jesus Christ is risen. So let's pray that we can grasp that. Let's pray that we can be filled with the Spirit. Let's pray that we can be the change. Because Jesus rising from the dead changes everything. Let's be part of that change. 
Let's be part of building God's kingdom. So I just want to pray for us all as I close. I hope you can feel a little sense of that awe that comes with those words. Christ is risen. Father God, we pray to you now. We pray on this Easter Sunday as we celebrate your risen Lord. We pray that you can really open our hearts and minds to that truth. That those words can be the most powerful words in our lives. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. And we pray, Lord, for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit on all of us. Help us to know that truth. Help us to welcome that truth. Embrace that truth. Make that truth part of our life. And give us that power to be bold. To be part of that change. To be part of bringing your kingdom here to our communities. Bless us, Lord, on this special day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Against it, 
and even some people who are not so good and who are harder to love. It will help our prayers if we name them specifically in our hearts now. stone across the tomb is an illness or grief or breakdown or a major decision. You, Lord, know the weight of these stones that lie heavy across the tomb. Call Amen. me, Lord, and roll away the stone. the stone. We pray for everyone in our global family affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, for those in our own parish, for those who live in countries where healthcare is limited, and poverty brings enormous challenges. May God grant us all the gift of an open-hearted, generous and compassionate response. Come on, Lord, to empower, empower us to release others trapped by circumstances. Amen. So we come to the part of our service where we're going to take communion together. So, I'll go up to the altar to do the Eucharistic prayer. Um, when the bread, and you will receive the wafers, um, when the bread and wine has been blessed, Julian will, uh, I'll come back down here and Julian will invite you to come out at the appropriate time. Um, if you could make your way down the centre aisle, remember to sanitise your hands as you come down. Um, hold your hand out and I'll drop the wafer into your hand. And then if you can make your way back to your seat um, like that, so that we're not passing each other like a... If vicarin doesn't work out, <laughs> I could always go and work on an aircraft. Um, <laughs> although perhaps not in the current climate. <laughs> We don't want people passing in the aisles, so make your way back to your seat in an appropriate way. Um, when you get back to your seat, take your mask off, hook it from behind one ear, pop your wafer in and hook it back on again. Um, and there'll be some quiet for you, to, for you to pray and just to be with God. It might be that you've got no more words to say, and that is fine. Just rest in the presence of God uh, and, and count on the prayers of the generations that have gone before us. I think that's everything. You're going to move that, aren't you? Great. <laughs> no. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. Alleluia.
Grace us as your children, and we will come to us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. Sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do do this this in remembrance of him. His His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, Send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As As we we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts are holy. Give Give us us this bread always. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. With the risen life of Christ within you, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.